me move now to GPU computing. We've always felt that heterogeneous computing, parallel computing, could really revolutionize computing because of its characteristics. You could use the CPU for single-threaded performance where single-threaded code is. You could use a parallel processor for massively parallel complicated problems. And so there's all kinds of applications for such a thing. It would be higher performance, the speed up would be phenomenal, and it would be the most efficient way, the most energy efficient way of doing uh, computation. The challenge for us was how do we take a brand new computing model? You know, we're familiar with using C compilers and high level program constructs, and we run it on basically the microprocessor architecture of today. How do we take this brand new architecture and bring it to the world. It's a bit of a chicken or egg problem. On the one hand, if there are no applications that are heterogeneous, why would somebody buy a computer with a parallel processor inside? And if there are no computers with parallel processors inside, how do you create the install base to inspire software programmers to go create software for such an architecture? And so that's the classic chicken or the egg problem. 10 years ago, we came to a realization that maybe the GPU is the perfect platform, the perfect vehicle to bring this new architecture to the marketplace. And the reason for that is several folds. Number one, computer graphics is inherently programmable. It's inherently parallel. If we could extend the architecture so that it could be more general purpose, not only would we be able to expand its ability to program and run applications from all different fields, we could also push computer graphics to the next level from programmable shading to now computational graphics. The two examples that I showed you this morning would not have been possible without CUDA. The second thing, of course, is that the GPU had a day job. It didn't need any applications to go to market. It already has a day job. The day job is called computer graphics. And so with that inspiration, we decided to take CUDA to market, make every single one of our GPUs CUDA compatible, and look what happened. GTC happened. The impact to the industry is really hard to even express. And every year, I give you guys a status report. In 2008, we had 100 million GPUs that are CUDA compatible, 150,000 CUDA downloads. 150,000 is a lot of different programmers downloading it. And we had one supercomputer that was powered by Tesla. 60 universities were teaching parallel programming courses using the GPU, using CUDA. And there were 4,000 academic papers. This year, nearly half a billion processors, CUDA processor, have been shipped. You couldn't go anywhere around the world without getting hit by one. If you wanted to program parallel, if you wanted to program using CUDA, you just had to run down to the local store. 1.6 million times it's been downloaded, the CUDA programming kit, and now 50 supercomputers around the world. 640 universities, that's a lot of universities, I really appreciate all of you, evangelizing and teaching the next generation how to think in parallel, how to program in parallel. And of course, the work that you guys do in research, 37,000 papers. The industry support has been phenomenal. This is what it looked like at the important supercomputing conference in 2008. All the greens are um, partners of ours or OEMs or vendors who are somehow promoting parallel computing, somehow promoting Tesla. This is what it looks like this year. That was, that's, about a, that's about 50, by the way. This is what 2012 supercomputing looks like. And it is almost completely, completely um, penetrated. It's very clear that we are close to the tipping point. We're, if we're not at the tipping point, we're racing at it. If we're not at a tipping point, we're racing at it. And in fact, you could kind of see from the top, top 500 supercomputers. These are early adopters of technologies, but these are informed adopters. They're building these computers 
for scientific applications, for scientific research. They're building these computers for real work. They're building these computers so that they can inspire science that could save lives. This represents about 20% of the overall, of the total top 500 computing horsepower. This year, we represented 20%. And so it's going to be really interesting to see what happens next year. Out of, out of that includes the world's most powerful, the world's most advanced supercomputer, the Oak Ridge Titan. The Oak Ridge Titan has been in operation now for some time. And um, I'm pleased to say that not only is it the highest theoretical performance supercomputer, it also just recently did the world's largest solids mechanical simulation at sustained of 10 petaflops, 40 million processors, 40 million CUDA processors. I can't even fathom that. 40 million CUDA processors came together to solve a singular problem and deliver 10 petaflops of sustained performance, which is five times larger, five times faster, five times, however you think, more complex than anything achieved up to that time. This week, the Swiss Supercomputing Center announced that they are also going to adopt the Tesla GPU and build U Europe's fastest GPU supercomputer. They're going to be using it for weather simulation so that they can predict weather very accurately a day to up to a week in advance, getting people out of harm's way. A whole bunch of other research is going to be done on this supercomputer called Pizdant. Pizdant, I think, is the tallest mountain in Switzerland. So now we have major supercomputing centers and large supercomputing installations in Japan, in China, in the United States, in Europe, and many others. Really, really exciting to see that we are racing at the tipping point, if not at the tipping point. But nothing is more exciting, really, than, frankly, the research that is being done. You guys are all here to showcase your work, to learn from other people's work. There's some, just some amazing science being done here. I didn't know that the human genome wasn't just a double helix. Apparently, that's only the short strands. Tomorrow's keynote is going to be really interesting. Apparently, that our genetic code could be up to two meters long. And somehow, this two-meter code is somehow compressed and condensed in a three-dimensional way into a nucleus of a cell a few microns wide. And somehow, it doesn't knot up. And somehow, depending on the way that it's, it's folded, the same genetic code will store different information so that it could be a liver cell or it could be a something else cell. Amazing insight. The scientists at Baylor and Rice are going to talk to you about how they discovered this and how they used the GPU to decode their discovery. 50 gigapixel camera. My camera is 4 megapixel. 50 gigapixel camera. Made up of a whole bunch of off-the-shelf sensors. 50 gigapixels. So many pixels that they needed GPUs in the back end to do the image processing and the filtering and the operations on it. But imagine the possibilities. It's just a large array of low-cost cameras. If we could do the image processing fast enough, this super-resolution image could be used for digital zooming, refocusing, It'll be taken in 3D, of course. Look at the size of that camera. Imagine the benefits in sports events, live action events. Really fantastic work. They needed a GPU to achieve what they achieved. The work done at, at uh, Stanford, folding at home, understanding how proteins misfold. They used the spare cycles of millions of gamers around the world. Millions of gamers around the world 
donate their spare cycles up to Stanford so that they could run this program to understand better how proteins misfold. This year, they identified a candidate drug for Alzheimer's off of the spare cycles of millions and millions of gamers around the world. Really fantastic stuff. You guys are going to see some really great work. I just want to, I want to name off a few of them. One of these days, we're going to make a, a smaller stage. This is really amazing stuff. Well, first of all, the companies that are here. Audi's here, Apple's here, ESPN, Exxon Mobil, Harley Davidson, Lego, NASDAQ, Nike, SpaceX, both of Elon Musk's companies are here. Elon, SpaceX, and Tesla Motors are, are both here. Walt Disney's here, Pixar's here. Netflix is here, NASA's here. iRobot is here. Goldman Sachs is here, E-Trade is here. Chevron's here, Amazon's here. This is just a small list of all the companies that are here. All kinds of papers, 400 different sessions. I was going through the, the, uh, the program guide last night. It's just incredible. This is Mecca. This is Mecca of scientific discovery. And this year, we have manufacturing really well represented. We have image processing all over the place. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later. Image processing is absolutely all over the place. There's some strange ones, too. I like this one. This is a CUDA for a dating site. They're using it for somehow matching the compatibility of whatever. <laughs> and the uh, website, you'll be happy to, to learn, is called fish.com. I don't know why. So somehow they have a cluster of 48 GPUs. They're running 24-7, looking for a date. Uh, there's a, another paper that's really interesting, GPU accelerated diamond cutting. OK, let's not waste any diamonds, shall we? So apparently it makes it brighter. It's a more accurate cut, and um, none goes to waste. <laughs>